Right, welcome to another video on AQAS chemistry. Today I'm going to be doing a video on oxidation of alcohols. I call this a part one of two video. Um, and today we're going to be going through ketones and aldehydes, the naming of these products, sort of naming of ketones and aldehydes, carboxylic acids, the oxidation products, and um, the oxidation products from different alcohol reactants. Um, so, first of all, we're going to start off with ketones and aldehydes. So, ketones and aldehydes are functional groups that can be reduced by the oxidation of alcohols. Uh, so, if I give you an example, so ketones, when the secondary alcohol is oxidized, the molecule produced is a ketone. And ketones have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen atom and two other single carbon carbon bonds. Uh, the simplest ketone is propanone, which I'm going to show you above. So propanone would be just your carbon here. Double bonded to an oxygen and then another carbon here. This is, the, this is called formaldehyde because this is the simplest naming, the simplest um, pr uh, propanol, the simplest ketone. But if we're talking about the functional group of an aldehyde, of a, oh, sorry, of a ketone, is the carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and e and the carbon that's bonded, that the carbon that's in the carbon. This is called, this here is called the carbonyl group. And for a ketone, the, the functional group of a ketone, it has two R groups either side of the carbonyl bond or of the carbonyl group. So that is the functional group here of a ketone. And the most simplest one is propanone. And the name of ketones, um, so it will be called alkan and then the, the it will be the, the, the own is representing the, the extra here represents the number of the carbon. So Propanone is it, technically this could be called propan two own because it's the second carbon. However, the uh, carbonyl for a ketone it's always going to be between two R groups, and since it's, uh, since the only position that the R group can be in, so the only position that the carbonyl group can be in, in order for it to be a ketone is on carbon two. You don't actually have to specify and say propan two own. Um, and it's the same kind of thinking with butanone. It's only going to be able butan two. It's always going to be butan two. If I draw it here, H three C. It's always going to be a butan two own. It's always going to be on the second carbon. If the if the carbon group is here, it's one two three four. If it's here, it's not butan three on. You count it from nearest side of so it'll be one two three four so it's always going to be butan two on so by that definition butan two you could just say butan butan butanone so propanone butanone however when you get to propan propanone you have to now specify because it could either be on if i just remove this one here if i was to have a it could be here you know, CH2, CH2, CH3. Or, so it could either be that, or it could be... That, so that's, that, that would be butan, that would be pentan, Free own the previous one would have been pentan two own, and same thing here. If it's on this side, it's still pentan two own because you always count from the near side. So the numbers numbers are used on a longer alkene to show on which group the ketone group lies. And so when you're talking about the number, that's just the carbon. Uh, it's just telling us where the functional group, which carbon the functional group is on, and in this case, be this first carbon is where the carb is where the functional group is on. So you call it. Uh, pentan free on. Hopefully that just makes sense. Should get that part. Aldehydes. A primary alcohol can be oxidized to an aldehyde. Uh, an aldehyde has a carbon-oxygen bond 
uh, sorry, a carbon oxygen bond. Should we say a carbon oxygen double bond? Shit, let me move this part here out. There you go. A carbon oxygen double bond and at least one carbon hydrogen bond. The simplest aldehyde is methanol, also known as formaldehyde. So I forgot to say for the previous one. Uh, so a secondary alcohol, I should have should have made more clear, a secondary alcohol can be oxidized um, into a ketone, whereas uh, it but it can't be oxidized into an aldehyde, and I'll explain why later on. So the so the easy, the simplest the simplest one is methanol. It has to have at least so it, it the, the function group for this actually is uh carbon it can have an H here. It can have an R group, but it can also be a H. So it can be either an R group or an H, but it needs to have at least an in it is usually at the end of the end carbon or the last carbon, uh, because it has to have at least one hydrogen bond. So uh the only time they will have a H is if it's methanol really. But it's usually the the last carbon which has the um, the function group for the for the aldehyde, um, and yeah, that's really really. So we can use the general names: ethanol, propanol, butanol, and pentanol. And there's no need for any numbers in the naming of these aldehydes, um, because uh, yeah, there's no need. For, there's no need for you to, for, uh, for any numbers on the naming of these aldehydes. Uh, because the aldehyde function group can only lie on the end, as I said before, it can only lie on the end of the carbon. So this it will always be, um, it will always be, ethan one hour, propan one hour, butan one hour, pentan one hour. There's no point. You always know it's going to be on the end. So um, yeah, there's no need for that really. And then the carboxylic acids. So an, an aldehyde. So. Um, once you've oxidized an alcohol, a primary alcohol into an aldehyde, you can actually, if you change the reaction conditions, you can actually um, oxidize the aldehyde uh, into a carboxylic acid. You can't oxidize a ketone to a carboxylic acid, however, but you, um, I'll explain why in a minute as well. But the simplest uh, acid, f the simplest one is meth methan, should say methanoic acid, it must be a typo here. Uh, I'll put it on here. Methanoic acid, not methanol acid. And I'll just put that here. Great. So I'll, I'll, I'll say methanoic acid. Um, That. And the function group for these um, are always also is always at the end as well. I mean, yeah, I still put it at the end, but it can be not necessarily at the end actually technically, but usually, no, it has to be. It has to be an ending group. It's not like aldehydes where it's always at the end because you can always have it at the middle and have a side uh, methyl group or. But it, it's it's usually an, an ending. I mean, you can't really form, you know, two in the middle, so it will be at the end, but the naming of it can vary. Uh, and the function group will just be... And then your OH. Oxidation of alcohols. So oxidation... Um, in oxidation, each of these kinds of alcohols can be oxidized to different extremes. Um, so to different extents. Uh, the rule is that you can break the carbon-hydrogen bonds because they're weak bonds, or carbon-hydrogen bond is a very weak bond. Um, but you can't break a carbon-carbon covalent bond. Well, there's not enough energy released from the oxidation process in order to break, or not, it doesn't have the activation energy in order to break a carbon-carbon covalent bond. This is a very strong non-polar bond here so um that wasn't be broke but this can this is a very weak bond it can be broken so 
each cell uh, for primary alcohols can be oxidized twice because if you have primary alcohols um, as shown above when you're forming when you're, when you're forming a I'll just show from here when you're going from aldehydes. The reason why you can form an aldehyde release is because when you have if it's on the end, right? Let's just say let's just say ethanol for, for the sake of it. If I wanted to form this bond here, a carbon, uh, the carbonyl group, and I need to go, that I can break off this bond here, gone. Just rub this off. So that's removed. And there you have it. Now you have an aldehyde. Obviously, remove the hydrogen there for obvious reasons. But now you, now you have your aldehyde. I should call this an R group, really. Where well, and um. If I wanted to go further from here, you know, and actually, I wouldn't remove that one. So that would stay the same. Don't need, I'll leave that one alone. But if I wanted to form a, an alcohol, so a, sorry, a carboxylic acid, I can, again, I can break this easy, very easy carbon hydrogen bond here. And you have an OH. Whereas. If it's a secondary alcohol, let's just call it R. I shouldn't be doing it. Let's go R. Right. The R just represents a carbon hydrogen bond, but um, but you know what? To demonstrate my point, I actually use will use a C. But you know what I mean. I'm not gonna go and write the hydrogen ones because you already know what I'm trying to say here. But an OH carbon, right? The only there's only one this hydrogen bond here that can break, right? This is only this carbon hydrogen bond that can break. I can't break this carbon. There's not enough energy for me to break this bond in order to form a carbon oxygen bond here. It's like this, so that breaks. And that's why secondary alcohols can, secondary alcohols can only be converted into ketones as shown here, because you can only form, you can only break that one carbon hydrogen bond. Now there is another example which is tertiary, but I'll get onto that a little bit later. But that's why. That's why oxidation with alcohols has to be specific to the type of alcohol. The usual oxidizing agent for all of these uh, is acidified potassium dichromate. That there are other examples that the AQA accepts, but generally the one that you you want is acidified potassium five dichromate. This is just. The five here in Roman numerals it just represents the oxidation number of the chromate or the chromium uh, in it's actually this actually I'll write down here. K2CR207. And this chromium here is a that chromium there has an oxidation number of plus five. That's actually a year two thing that oh, oxidation numbers isn't, but that comes in handy in year two when you learn about uh, when you learn about uh, transition metals. All right, so a uh, two possible oxidation reactions for primary alcohols, as I said before, it can be oxidized to aldehydes. If experimental conditions are changed, you can oxidize them further into uh, carboxylic acids. So I'll draw a. I'll do, I'll, Primary alcohol here, ethanol. Sorry, ethanol, ethanol, not as ethanol, ethanol. Um, yes, yeah, skeletal formula. As I said before, you can break carbon hydrogen bonds. I show, I show, I show the other way because that's a bit better. I'll show you what I mean by again, but. See, you know, it can be oxidized once, break that bond, forming a double bond, a double O bond, and then if I want to form a car, uh, another OH here, for, you know, for an, another oxidation, remember oxidation is able loss of oxidation is loss of electrons or gaining of oxygen. If I wanted to form another bond here, I could just break this bond here. So, and therefore you can have two oxidations. Secondary alcohols, only one possible oxidation reaction. You can oxidize them to a ketone. 
you can't oxidize them any further without breaking carbon carbon covalent bonds. So let's go for a let's go for the same example again. You already know I already explained it before. If I wanted to form that carbon that carbonyl group, if I want to form the carbonyl group, you're trying to form number one step of the oxidation is to form the carbonyl group. If I wanted to form the carbonyl group, the only way I could do that is by breaking this carbon hydrogen bond because I can't break carbon carbon covalent. These are very this is a very strong non polar bond, requires a lot of energy, but this weak carbon hydrogen bond can be broken, and then I can obviously that gets lost as well. Hopefully you're getting the point here. I don't want to be over explaining it, but I feel like I am. But it's what it is. Uh, tertiary. Now the example here is tertiary alcohols. Is the one when I wanted to get onto. Um, tert. If I wanted to choose a, a tert alcohol, I thought these. I forgot what are, these are called. I know it's tert something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna do this example here. It'd be two methyl propanol right two methyl propanol this example here this can't be oxidized tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized because uh, they have three carbon groups bonded to the alcohol carbon the only way to add more oxygen involves breaking carbon carbon bonds as shown here so you know the only way in order to in me for me to to form this is if i break there's no hydrogen here there's no carbon hydrogen there's no other bond so it's only this very strong you know non-polar carbon 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 covalent bond, and as I said before, we don't break carbon carbon covalent bonds because just we just there's not enough energy to break the bond, and so from from the oxidation reaction, so since that's impossible, therefore um, we can't oxidize tertiary alcohols, and that's if you, you know these are the type of things you need to. Um, I'm already I'm saying all these things because these are the type of things that they're looking for. They'll give you in a, in a test. They'll ask you something like. Um, in an exam, they ask you, here's a set of compounds, compound V, compound X, compound Y, whatever. And they said, this compound, um, this compound, when it, when it was reacted with under the simple distillation or reflux, um, didn't, did, was not, was not oxidized uh, or showed, it, um, one of the, so I forgot to say here for potassium dichromate, uh, when it oxidizes, for where is it? Do I put this person in the wrong way? When it oxidizes, it actually goes from an orange green, from orange to a uh, green color. When it oxidizes, so it won't. So when you're when it's when it's not oxidizing, it won't ha it won't show a, a color change, right? So if it was with this alcohol here, well, not secondary. If it's with tertiary alcohol, there won't be any color change with the potassium dichromate, right? So when I ask you in the exam if they have anything to do, because remember they're never gonna just say what happens with a tertiary alcohol, they're always going to infer something. And so when you're inferring, when they're asking you to explain this situation, um, you have to keep in mind, this is a tertiary alcohol. It doesn't, um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it, there's no way for it to oxidize because I have to break this bond. There's, there's no carbon hydrogen bond. Carbon, 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 carbon. All right, I'll move on because I'm feeling waffling way too much now. And, oh, actually, no, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's literally it. Um, I think I've been waffling on for too long now. But hopefully this video helped. Um, and, yeah, in, as I said before, in the exam, you're never going to get a question that just says, what's this? They'll give you they'll give you free, they'll give you the equipment that you need. They'll say they have, uh, an, a scientist has free um, compounds, compound X, compound Y, compound V, right? Um, using, using the equipment that you have here uh, and... Explain an apparatus or explain a method. Simple distillation. I'm gonna go that through that in the part two video. Simple distillation or um, reflux, and then explain the color change that you would explain the observation. An observation would be the color change. Um, uh, there wouldn't be any like really effervescence. That's not really important. When you're, when you're saying the color change, don't just say the color that it changes into. Say the color that it's, it was originally in. And then say the color that it was um, that was found at the end. So from orange to green, it does it for the potassium dichromate. Um, you know, it don't just say it turns green, right? That's that's the most important. But yeah, that's it.